movies, to me in some ways, are a very effective connection uh, between the past and the present. Uh, that the image of these, these flickering uh, silhouettes on screen, to some degree, as effectively as the stories we can tell about the physical connections between these people, bring these past uh, events to life. And there's actually a very interesting book, um, I don't know if it was ever made into a movie, uh, written by Adolfo Cesares in about 1940, called The Invention of Moral, that takes this idea to its logical extreme. I mean, we'll just see, this is just a take, because I have a feeling I'm going to mess a lot of stuff up. Fugitive from justice. Also a writer. He lands on the island, finds a kind of bucolic setting. Uh, there's a building at the center, a kind of museum. But he's all alone. A boat approaches with a party of beautiful, indolent people aboard. They disembark and begin to enjoy themselves on the grounds of the museum all around the island. He follows them. He gets to know them all. striking woman is named Faustine. Fugitive follows her every afternoon at sunset when she goes to the edge of a cliff to watch the sun set over the ocean. He begins to fall in love with her. Finally, in his desperation to connect with someone, anyone, he approaches her. But she ignores him. Everybody ignores him. And he begins to doubt his own sanity. Are they there? Are they ghosts? Has he imagined everything? Then one day, they're gone. He investigates and discovers in the basement of the building an enormous turbine that seems to be run by the tides that wash in and out beneath the, uh, beneath the, the, the blades. He figures out a way to start the turbine again. Lights go back on in the building, and the next day, the people are there again. He didn't know where they came from. He watches meeting in the great hall of the building between Morrill and the rest of the people, in which he announces that he's been making 
a recording of the party with a camera of his own invention, which captures not just sight, but reality itself. Everything on the island has now been recorded for perpetuity. Not just them, the plants, their thoughts, their subjective experiences. The idea, he said, is that they can all relive this perfect time in their lives forever and ever. But the people guess correctly that the price of the recording is their physical death, that the radiation from the machine, the invention of moral, will kill their bodies. Morel is outraged that they should be upset, that the price of the price of the immortality is physical death. The fugitive now understands that the people he's been watching are dead. This explains some of the anomalies in their um, in what he's seen. The appearance of two suns in the sky from the sun as it was at the time of the recording and the sun as it is in the day that he lives in. The book is in the form of a diary. And in the diary, he records his desire, his intention to enter the film, reveal himself to Faustine, and live with her forever, even if it causes his physical death. He hopes in the future that their souls themselves will merge somehow, if this can be accomplished with a future invention. Contemporary psychologists have suggested the book be used as a model for most sophisticated forms of brain mapping, which up till now have only included the objective or third-party uh, observation of data regarding experience. If somehow the subjective experience of the observed can be integrated with the objective material, then the notion is that a fully formed, integrated understanding of human experience can ultimately be achieved. The notion that experience can be recorded in minute, granular data lends itself to the idea that information can be digitized all information regarding experience, that our entire notion of what is real and what we feel is not simply a fleeting moment of perception, but can actually be recorded in its totality. If that can be done, then our experiences can also be replayed over and over again as they were for the people that moral observe, that the, the people that the fugitive observed, and that perhaps someday we can all live in a state of perpetual bliss.